I tried to get the, the recipe for the sauce and meatballs. So before my grandfather passed away, I cornered him in the kitchen. I said, Gene, I said, you're going to cook and I'm going to write down everything you do because he wouldn't give me a recipe. He didn't have a recipe. He's like, no, you don't, you cook with your heart. And, you know, and he'd always say, you ain't a shitting, you know? And I wrote down everything and I still couldn't get it right because I think he lied to me half the time. <laughs> like they're very good. You have to Did add I, that extra in. That's, that's what I must, I must have missed. Yeah. You know, your mother has one of my cookbooks. Oh, she does. I have an extra one here. I could have given it to you. And it has the meatball recipe in it. Well, done and done. There you go. Yeah, there you go. I love Man, it. I'll tell you what I'll do. I have it on my computer. I'll, uh, I'll what do you call it? Trans email it. <laughs> How do you do it? You copy it and paste and mean email it. We'll do it tonight, Aunt Paul. Perfect. Okay, great. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that's, thank you so that's much. That's awesome. Wait a, minute, wait a minute. I need your email address. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Yeah, well. What is it? <laughs> it's a H. Imagine a perfect world where you can build a restaurant, open the doors, and make loads of money. Unfortunately, those days are over. It takes great leadership, hard work, and long hours to operate a successful restaurant. Together, we can make it happen. This is Restaurantopia. This podcast we do is, is always to help restaurants. Yeah. That's all we want to do is, in, in fact, my only job at this company is to help restaurants. That's all I do is go out and just help them and, and do my best to, to make sure that they're doing the best job they can do. So I lend my expertise and experience to them and, and help them not make the mistakes I made, essentially, is what it comes down to. And so where you guys come into this, I was telling them, Brian and Dave, and I guess I'll tell our listeners out there too, was Rebecca and I went to Florida, uh, when was it? middle of March, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. So we go to Florida, we go down to St. Pete beach yeah, right. and I just got to get Beck's toes in the sand and mm -hmm. uh, just a three day jump. We both got vaccinated. So we're like, let's get out of here. Let's hop on a plane. So I go to St. Pete beach. And of course, Polly and Anna live in Clearwater, which is like 20 minutes North. Yeah, yeah. And so I talked to my aunt Chris and my mom and they're like, listen, look up Aunt Polly. I'm like, Oh yeah, that's right. She lives there. So I'm like, great. And I haven't talked to her in a while. So gave her a call. And of course she's like, you have to come up for dinner. You have to come up and, and visit and blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, cause that's just the Seville way, right? That's yeah. just what you got to do. I did. And I'll never forget this. Cause Beck's like, well, I don't know. I don't know your aunt Polly that well. And you know, I'll just be nervous. Cause my wife gets really nervous. Right. And uh, as sweet as she is, she's always so worried. And I'm like, don't worry. It's going to be fine. Right. It's going to be fine. Well, we had a really rainy day that day, like terribly rainy. So we drive up there and this is where it all starts. We pull into the house, Corinda, who's, we can see her in the background sometimes, Anna's daughter. Corinda comes out to our car from the house. Hi, Corinda. <laughs> with an umbrella to get back out of the car. She ordered nice. from the rain, right? Beck goes from feeling nervous and anxious to all of a sudden very, very welcome. Mm -hmm. And I think that's such an important distinction because we talk about hospitality all the time. Like hospitality is the center of restaurants, right? Like that's, right. that's what they're all about. That's right. And so after that, they, they gave Beck an umbrella and walked her into the house. Mm -hmm. And they don't even know Rebecca. First thing yeah. they do, big hugs and kisses. Right. Without a doubt, like big hugs and kisses, right? Like we don't know you, but the first thing we do is we're going to hug and kiss you, yeah. right? That's just the way it goes. When I walk into the house, it smells. So Polly, I guess to, to back it up. So how this family dynamic works, Polly is my aunt and my great aunt. Mm -hmm. And she is a sibling of my grandfather. Mm -hmm. And you had, Polly, you had what, 13 siblings, right? Yes. So what, 12? I was the 13th. So. You were the 13th. Lucky, so. lucky 13. That's it. You bet, you bet. Yeah, my mother was the oldest. Right. So Anna is actually Polly's niece. Okay. Anna's mom was the oldest and Polly is the youngest. And okay. my grandfather fit in between there somewhere. So when I walk into the house, I, I, and I haven't smelled those smells in so long. <laughs> it turns out Polly and all her sisters and brothers, and I'm sure Anna and everybody else too, all cook the exact same spaghetti and meatballs. Yeah. And you understand this is religion in my house, yeah, right? Yeah. This is every Sunday. <laughs> we and I walk in. And that smell hits me and I'm like, oh my God. So like, I go back to that point in time. Like I could have cried, Polly. I'm not lying to you. I was so happy. She made fresh pasta, whips out for a thing of oh, fresh pasta. Nice. She like, frozen, boils it off. She's got a pot of neck bones and meatballs and sauce going. First thing is hugs and kisses. Let me get you something to drink. Let me get you sat down. We yeah. go in, Brian, and she's got the dining room table set up or they do. And they have the coffee machine set up and they got wine setting out and glasses just in case we want it. Like a variety of drinks. It was like an army of people prepared for us. Right? <laughs> and, and, and that's one thing that we, we see so often with restaurants is they fail on the hospitality. And, it, and it's not just like the server. It's every level of your cousin coming out with the umbrella and the, the hugs and, you know, whether it's the, the valet, the server, the host, all of the people in the restaurant organization 
need to have hospitality, but I, I, I love your guys' hospitality. This is amazing. Yeah. Well, if you so, will do the same. Thing. Beck was nervous and a bit anxious about what's that. I said, if Brian comes, we'll do the same for him. Right. Right. <laughs> what? What if? If yeah, when I come, I'm, I'm there. Be careful. We have a <laughs> we have a sister company in Tampa that Brian always travels to, so he's yeah. probably going to pay oh. you a visit. Then, then, then consider it a must. Right. You're only right. twenty minutes away. <laughs> Right. So my wife goes from uneasy and anxious about this visit to we sat there for five hours, wow. five hours. <laughs> and we had everything. I've never felt so comfortable in my life. And, and I want to thank you for that so much because I know how much work goes into it. But I want to know more about you. And you said you do this for your neighborhood, too. Like you guys are always entertaining. You're always having people over. Well, <clears throat> during the COVID, it was, you know, we had to cool it. But before the cold, I used, I was bored. I love to cook, number one. That's number one. Mm -hmm. And so when I get bored, I decide to call my neighbors. And there's three girls that I know. And I all, I'm, hung, I'm hungry for meatloaf, are you? And they'll say, yeah. So then they come. And I can't, I, I can't cook for just one person. I can't even cook for four anymore. I cook for 10. And so <laughs> when they come, then I always make sure they take everything home with them because I don't want to eat all that stuff for five days in a row. So that's how we do it. So now I say, Anna, Wendy, you coming? We're going to eat. And that's how I get her here. And I still have the friends too. We're going tonight, by the way. Tonight, they're coming tonight. We're having uh, um, chicken and uh, I have some vegetables ready and uh, I'm marinating the chicken. Yeah, <laughs> What are you marinating in? Um, um, I was going to ask you, cooks, what's your good marinade for chicken? Well, uh, you know, Italian dressing never hurts, right? Yeah. So that's exactly what's on it. That's what there you go. Super so, easy to do. Yeah. That's that's the standby, right? I, standby. I have it in the refrigerator covered and everything ready for yeah. tonight. Then yeah. we'll bake. I love it. So, yeah. you know, obviously you love serving other people. Is it, oh, I do. I can tell. It lights you guys up. What is it about serving other people that makes you guys so happy? You know why? I was the 13th child. I was in, we had a full table every time we sat down to eat, my family. And that's what I do. Ask Anna, how many times I say, you know, the best thing in my heart feels with joy is seeing my table full. Right. And that's true. Isn't it, Anna? Right. That's one of the prayers yeah. before we eat. Yes. As, as we grew up with, with your Aunt Lucy, we... We did the same thing. We all sat down at the table. We all ate. And at the same nobody time. Nobody was doing this or anything else. You know, I mean, we, we talked to each other. We, we became, you know, we were family. And we knew what was going on. Did and a lot of arguing and yelling. With just Corinda here now, we sit at the table and eat too. You know, I mean, it's not like she's, she's here or doing anything. And if she has to be on her work station here, then I bring her food to her so she doesn't, you know, but we do sit and talk. That's what you do, you know, with family, even with friends. Well, nobody, yeah. absolutely nobody brings any kind of electronics to my table. No. When we That's eat, right. we eat and we talk. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys yeah. have really good food, so that certainly helps the scenario, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm the dessert person. Not so much the food as the dessert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the I... dessert. Did you notice I didn't mention dessert? No. That's my job. Yeah, and you made that. You made that cake we had, right? Right. Can you tell me a little bit about that cake? Which one was it? I can't, I make so many. <laughs> I want to say it was a lemon cake, right? A lemon oh. cake. Yeah. It's it's yeah. called the lemon sauce cake, and it's a lemon yeah. cake mix. And then I make a. I have to punch holes all through it, you know. And mm -hmm. then I make a sauce that I pour over it, and it's just so sweet and moist. It's just delicious. Everybody loves it. In fact, we're having a get together Monday here in the park uh, on our street, and they asked me to make that. So I have to make that for them, you know. And we have to pick up Aunt Polly. Yeah, we have to pick up Aunt Polly because she's coming. And I'm, mm -hmm. stuff, and I'm making stuffed mushrooms also. So. Nice. Oh, I love her stuffed mushrooms. Man, are they delicious. Yeah. And so, how, how do you make the stuffed mushrooms? Like, what, what, what do they have? Uh, mine are very simple. They don't have crab meat or any of that kind of stuff in them. I, I make my breadcrumbs and I oil it so that they're moist, but I cut up the stems of the mushrooms and I put it in with my breadcrumbs and I clean my mushrooms and everything. And then I stuff them with that. And then I pour oil over them and I bake them. 
Mm -hmm. What about the garlic? Oh, well, yeah, the breadcrumbs are well, well seasoned, yes. You know, <laughs> with the cheese and the garlic and the salt and the pepper, you know. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I cut up the stems of the mushrooms, little teeny little pieces, and I, I add that with the breadcrumbs. And then I stuff my mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And then after they're all in my pan, I just drizzle oil over them, even though there's oil in the breadcrumbs already, so they stay moist. And but I don't eat mushrooms, by I the way. I didn't say that. I was just going to say that. I never eat mushrooms, don't even eat mushrooms. But I will make them for them every time. Yeah. And her brownies are famous. Yes, they I think are. Both of you should be famous. Huh? <laughs> what? So I don't know why my my brownies are famous. I mean, I make a I make a good brownie. That's all. You know? <laughs> yeah, look how humble. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, make yeah. a good brownie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What I love when I go out to a restaurant is amazing food with people like yourself, like loving, caring people who really want the, the guests to have a, an amazing time. And I would love to hear, like, when you guys have guests at your house, what are, what are some of the things that you do to make them feel more comfortable? Love them. <laughs> Read them. Really, really, you know. I mean, you don't invite people that you don't like, right? Sure. Very, very rarely do you have to do that. If you invite somebody, it means you're, you're good friends with them or good re relatives, you know, they're all really good people. And I just, I just love them because they're friends or family. You know, my house may not be the best house in the world, but when you come, you come to visit me, not my house. And you come mm -hmm. to eat my food, right? That's how I feel. What about you, Polly? I'll tell you the truth about the matter is that I enjoy anybody coming to my house. And that's strangers, anything. I mean, and they do come because, Anna, you will feed somebody's, your guests, brings a friend that you've oh, never met. of course. Met. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And they'll get the same hug that you gave the friend. You and I both know that. But I have the opinion that if you come in my house and don't expect a sprig of parsley on the top of your spaghetti for presentation, quote, presentation, which is very much to me in re big restaurants, anyhow, presentation means a lot to them. To me, I just like homemade cook food. And if you like my food, you come in and just expect to eat the food that I prepare. I'm happy. That makes me happy. Right. Why, why is it that it makes you happy? Is it just that you love making people happy? I love to cook. I was just laughing because I was talking to my daughter about this podcast. And she says, Mom, show them your bookcase. It's full of cookbooks. Mm -hmm. And that to me is a good cook. The more cookbooks you have. Now, of course, today they've got the internet. Mm -hmm. And so they don't. But uh, if you like to cook, you have a lot of cookbooks. And I have them from all over the world. That means you're a student of the game, right? Yeah. That's right. I love it. I, I love have it. two drawers full, plus a little bookcase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see, that's, that's an essence of a good cook. Right. Then the other essence is they like to cook. That has a lot to do with right. it. I have a daughter that does not like to cook. And so, therefore, she might have two cookbooks. <laughs> She, she's gonna listen to this she's gonna kill me but <laughs> they're, they're both they're both instapot yeah aunt Polly, what's your favorite dish to cook and serve well actually the most that i make the most is spaghetti and meatballs you know what i haven't done and i'm so hungry for and i'd love to have somebody like it and i'm gonna ask anna them i haven't had good old-fashioned stew for a long time. That's, oh, I, you, if you ask me what favorite ones, is that I have so many of them that I, I sort of get hungry for a particular thing. I'm not pregnant. God knows I'm 92. But I'm just <laughs> saying, I, you know, I mean, you get hungry for something. And so you think about it. And pretty soon it's in your mind. God, I got to make some of that. So mm -hmm. Anna, be prepared. We're going to have stew. I'm gonna, I'll make the stew. with them. Oh, well, that's great. I'll, I'll make the stew with the dumplings. Because yeah. Corinda right. loved, that's my family better. loved my stew. I couldn't See, make enough. That, if you ask really. Brian what we like, that's what we like right and there. Right. The mm -hmm. Chicken cutlets. And chicken cutlets. Don't forget. Chicken. Oh, yeah. I make oh, my yeah. chicken cutlets. Yeah, I like chicken cutlets. Oh, that, that, uh, those bruschola you made the other day was pretty oh, good. Right. Oh, yeah. Are they good? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they are too. See their eyes light up. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, that's yeah, fantastic. So, so, so. so Polly and, and listen, our, our family has always been very hospitable, and I and I have an anecdote. So really, and Brian really didn't believe me when I told him this, but Polly, tell me the story that you told me about how you got your name. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you. Um, I was born the night before Easter, mm -hmm. 
So my mother and dad decided they were going to name me Pasquale, which in Italy, it's the night before Easter, it's Pasquale. So a Pasqualina is what they were going to do. So uh, a bum, my mother always fed this bum. Poor old Fred would come in. He'd always say, oh, my God. You know, that was his, we used to call him, my God, Fred. <laughs> so he would come once a week. My mom would get him three big slices of bread and butter, and he'd dip it in coffee. I mean, those are the bums that they used to feed that. And my mother was a very kind lady. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he told my, my father and mother, says, that baby's too little. Don't call her that, Pascaline, or call her Pauline. So that's how I got named. What I want to talk about is your mother, my, my great-grandmother, Carmela. Mm -hmm. She would take the time to feed someone in need. Right. She would go out the back door, make sure that she fed my Godfred. Such a great name, mm -hmm. by the way. <laughs> my Godfred. Give him coffee out of the kindness of her heart. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. That, see, that's unbelievable to me that she would. And, and it's not I mean, you guys had 13 siblings. It's not like she had money hand over fist. I know. You know, know. it wasn't that, that, that you guys were, were going on lavish vacations and doing all these things, but mm -hmm. she still sacrificed the little bit that she had to give to him because he was in more need, right? Every Saturday, 25 pounds of flour, we would make bread. Really? So wow. that was homemade bread. Yeah. So I was talking to my Aunt Chris yesterday, or two days ago, right? Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, she's great. She reminds me a lot of you, actually. I'm not going to lie. Like, you guys are, are kindred spirits. You're both so bubbly and smiley all the damn time. I love it. But she says that I was telling her the story you just told us. And she goes, well, yeah. And I said, what do you mean? Well, yeah. And she goes, well, I, some of my fondest memories of kids were, were making bologna sandwiches for the bums that came across the railroad tracks. And, and when my grandparents lived in Yorksville, there was about a mile away was a set of train tracks. And they knew a couple of times a week they could walk across the field. And my grandpa and grandma and my aunt Chris would feed them bologna sandwiches. And then I got to thinking about it. It's like, man, it's the whole damn family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then then I look at, well, at right? with her umbrella and it's like, it doesn't stop there. And then I started thinking about being a kid with, with your siblings, whether it was Yula or Corinda or any of them, they were all so welcome and hospitable. And it was mm -hmm. all about family and all about the first thing you guys would ask was, did you eat yet? It was not <laughs> yeah. how you do it. Is. Not, <laughs> not too, it is. Did you eat yet? Right. I, yes, you're right. You're right. That is the first thing. <laughs> you know, I took that for granted. Folly, what would you tell a young person or like if talking to a restaurant or owner, how do you teach the next generation to have a high level of hospitality like you do? Well, first of all, I, I hate a waitress or a waiter that comes to the house to my table and does not greet me with a smile. That smile yeah. is the most important thing to me. I mean, if they have a genuine smile on their face, then I, I sort of warm up to them, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I sort of and tease them that. back and forth. Huh? And a name. And, and a name. name. Yes. And a name is important to you. Okay. And you, guys like to get, you guys like it to get personal. I, have, I want to be able to say thank you, Tara. Thank you, William, whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. Of all the people I know, uh, Anna likes to go out to eat more than I do. I mean, I like homemade. But I Anna love going out to eat. Now, she goes to a restaurant. She knows every waitress, every waiter in that restaurant. When I go with her, I'm amazed. She will say, uh, Judy, would you come over? Or something like that. She knows them. And so I get hugs and kisses when I go in, too. Right. We're right. talking about our favorite restaurant. And even the, the people that clear the tables. Right. She knows yeah. everything. Yeah. 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 So you say start off with a smile and start yeah. off with an introduction. What else? What's important? Be able to tell us what the specials are if we don't lead the board, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if they have any recommendations, I always ask, how's, let's see, how's the beef stew today? You know, how's yeah, the, yes. the shrimps today? You know, and they're very honest with me. They're very honest. I wouldn't ask if I didn't want to know. That's the way it's I our face. Say. It's our faces, Brian. We look old and amused and we need help. Oh, you're, 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 both, you're both, all three of you are beautiful. I, 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 is more I have one comment for me. Yeah. Yes. You treat everybody like they're coming into your home. Yeah. That's my biggest thing for restaurant yeah. owners and managers is they're coming into your place of business. And for that eight or 12 hours that you're in there, that's your home. Mm -hmm. so you treat people like they're coming into your home and you welcome them. And you learn people's names that come in once a week or, you know, three times a week. If you know who they are, we remember that as a patron. Mm -hmm. And we say, hey, 
Anthony remembered my name. I'm going to go back again. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. food, the food has to be good. Right. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you know, the welcoming is the right. big thing. Mm -hmm. And not but, just a new restaurant. I go into Walmart and they all know my name. I'm, I'm greeted what with- What are you, the most popular person in Clearwater, I, I, Anna? I go to the bank and it's, hi, Miss Anna, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, go to the You're like the official mayor of Clearwater Beach. I love it. <laughs> My phone was ringing. I know. I heard it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know. But I think you said it. I think you said it best, Anna, earlier when you just said simply love them. Yeah. Just right. love them. Right. That's it's got to be a place yeah. of love. Yeah. That's how I and, and how a restaurant tour coaches up his staff on how to do that. It's, I love it. It's meet the table with a smile. Say hello. Introduce yourself. Right be honest and open about the specials and have the knowledge that the, that the customer wants about the menu and, and, and about the food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We, 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 Anna, we talk about this all the time as far as like you call up to a restaurant to get takeout and you ask like, what's good or what's a special. And the person's like, I don't eat here. It's like, Oh my God. Oh like, my God. That would be terrible. You gotta be kidding me. That would be terrible. I really I love that response. Yeah. 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 You gotta be kidding me is right. Yeah. Like, Oh, it, it, and and the owners and the managers sometimes don't even know, but you constantly got to be coaching up your staff and constantly right, right. be getting yeah. face time with 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 your with your employees because you were lucky that you came from a family of hospitality. Not everyone comes from a family of hospitality, right. so it, right. it's not in their DNA. And that's but it's something that you can learn. You can yeah. learn to be kind. You can learn right. to be loving. You can learn to you can learn to provide amazing hospitality. Well, what's interesting too is love. Love can be a verb. Yeah, I just read this the other day that in right. Greek, I think they have like three different means for love, and one of which is a verb, and that's the one where maybe you don't have the intrinsic feelings, mm -hmm. but you love people anyway, and and it's not that you're gravitating towards, but you choose to love people first, it's right? Until they tell you that, right. until you until they tell you you shouldn't be loved or they shouldn't be loved, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's what you guys are alluding to there, but like. Eating is such an intimate experience, right? Like, you know, Polly and Anna, when you guys cook, like you're nourishing people, you're putting food inside their body, like their livelihood depends on what you're serving them. It should be a very personable experience. Mm -hmm. I agree. It I agree. should be names. It should be hugs. It should be all those things. I agree. Right. I, I love I agree. it. I, I wish restaurants had one tenth of the hospitality that you ladies have. You guys are more sweet. Right in fact, Polly, I'm going to put a sign up in front of your house. Polly's place. <laughs> Anna, you're going to be the maitre d'. Polly's the chef. Okay. All right, I'm for that. Yeah, you, got, you got to keep them in line. That's it. That's it. That's a lot of it. We thank you guys so much for uh, thank for you for having being us. Really, and, it's been uh, wonderful. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Is it time already? Oh my goodness, yeah. Boy, yeah. that's a fast time right oh, now. Oh, it, it goes so quick because we always have a good time but oh, that's good it's, it's something that is vital to the restaurant industry and, it, and we believe it's the foundation of, of any successful restaurant is the amazing hospitality and as we come out of covid here it is even more vital because we yes. lost that connection you guys down in florida didn't have covid um we had it up here in ohio and uh, <laughs> oh, we had it too <laughs> oh, uh, it was a disconnect with the customer because yeah. of all the take out that was done. Right. So now yeah. that we get to go back and like Anna said, like the ability to relearn the customer's names or to remember that and, and have that part as uh, part of the, the training. I think uh -huh. that's amazing. I think that's really, really neat. And I think it, it's really going to drive revenue for re restaurants that have been hurting and it's going to be very, very important moving forward. Yeah. And you know what? It's like getting back to the basics of the personal connection, right? And, right. and what are we here for? It is. Yeah. And I, like I always say, like, make really good food, but it doesn't have to be uh, some crazy, you know, uh, eccentric Chilean sea bass with imported truffle butter. Like, name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, just make, make it, make it good. When you hear a, somebody uh, say, oh, you ought to go in that restaurant. They make the best meatloaf, say that. They don't yeah. use a French word for it that's on the menu. They use a humble name. That's mm -hmm. what you want to do. Go back to being humble with your food. Mm -hmm. oh, humble in general. I love that. But, but humble, humble with your food is cool. I like, yeah. I like that. To me, it's not. It humble is the opposite of pretentious. Right? That's right. It, humble is the essence of comfort food, and humble is the essence of hospitality. 
I love that. Yeah. I love that. I, th I think that's. I think that may be the best way to close it out. Thank you guys. Okay. So much. Thank you for asking us. Yeah. Oh, my God. I can't wait. Well, thank you again well, for inviting us. Oh my thank God. You thank so you. Much. Are you serious? What? Love you so much, guys. Thank, thank you, you, guys. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 This is high quality pod. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everybody. Take care. Adios. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to Restaurantopia. The gratitude that we have for each and every one of you spending your precious time to listen to this podcast is immeasurable. Please make sure to tell a friend about this podcast. And also, if you have any feedback for us, visit us on restaurantopia.com and drop us a line. You can also subscribe on your favorite place to listen to podcasts. Thank you and have a great day. We also want to thank our sponsor, Hillcrest Food Service. If you are a local independent restaurant and are looking for a distributor who has chef and operational consulting, provides marketing support, does menu reviews, and most importantly, wants you to be successful, reach out to Hillcrest Food Service at hillcrestfoods.com. All right, perfect. I love it. Mm -hmm. right, good stuff. Anna, you look like you're in good shape too, right? Hey, I try. You when know? you live in Florida. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, hey, for being an old lady, I do pretty good, I guess, you know? You're right. Yeah, oh, don't listen, be how you feel. You guys, you guys are younger at heart than I am. No, I that's you for that sure. Much. I already know that. I, yeah. I've been on the golf for like a minute, and I already know that. <laughs> <laughs> and if I that's ever find that you came and didn't call me up here and come to dinner, I'll be really upset with Anthony for not telling me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for not telling me. <laughs>